Hi and welcome to another Sculptures tutorial. So now we're going to go from Sculpt Mode into Paint Mode and to do that we need to just select the Paint button and here you'll see automatically it will open up what resolution you would like the detail of your painting to be. So this is all dependent upon what you actually need the final outcome to be. Um, so you can take it down as low as 256 or up to 2048 pixels. So we'll just keep it at default um, for the time being or right there in the middle. Um, and we'll and you'll also also notice that it gives you a warning that you can't go back into sculpt mode once you begin painting in the paint mode. So it's very important to have a backup file, a backup version of your sculpt once you are uh, satisfied with it so that you can revert back to it if you ever need to do so. So we'll just click on OK and this will take us straight into paint mode. So the brushes have changed, so at the moment it's on symmetry, which means it's going to affect both sides equally, as was discussed in the previous tutorial, when symmetry is on. Um, we'll take both the size and the strength down and hardness down a bit. Okay. We'll... take symmetry off for the time being. Okay, so as we hover over it, you'll see the paint color brush, which is the shortcut is D. So if we select that, select our model, we can start painting. Now you can invert to toggle um, between your foreground and your background colors. And if you select either of them, you can select which, whatever color you want on the actual color wheel. This is really, the sculpting and the painting is really the fun aspects of, of sculptures and you can really ha achieve some fantastic results and have a lot of creative fun here. So, yeah, we'll just go for the yellow for the time being. So, okay, so, we'll, so once again we have the sliders. You can increase brush, the brush size. You can decrease the brush size. You can increase the strength. Or you can make it softer. Hardness. So that's really hard and then you can take it softer. So if we increase that brush a bit it will give a more air, a softer airbrushed look as opposed to being super hard like that so for obviously it depends on what you're trying to achieve what you're trying to paint um, so you can play with those settings and adjust them to whatever you need them to be so that's a size, strength and hardness and that's the paint colour brush. So we've got the bump colour, the paint bump and as you can see this is painting bumps into the actual surface. And if we increase that size. It's then 
going to obviously increase and give a more drastic uh, look. So the paint color was shortcut was D, paint bump was B, fill and clear is command F, flatten is F. So fill and clear just pretty much got rid, gets rid of all your bumps that you just did. So now that's going back each step, each time I click on it. Then the fill and clear is, after three steps, has reduced the actual bumps. And then we've got the flatten bump which does as it says and flattens the bump so these tools are really effective very fun to play with um, when sculpting and just play with these settings and play with the settings and the brushes to achieve the outcome that you actually desire okay so the paint color shortcut is D paint bump shortcut is B fill and clear is command F Flatten bump is shortcut is F. Y frame once again is is W or shift F, and symmetry has no shortcut. Symmetry will apply on both sides. Okay, so now to cover the actual brush icon and texture icon and material icon. So the material icon, again, once again, is the same as in the sculpt mode. So you can select the lighting, the material that you want on your model and the lighting variations, the reflectiveness, the reflective surface of the lighting. So you can play around with whatever you're trying to achieve, but I'll just keep it on default for the time being. And with brush, once again, you can import a texture to uh, paint onto your model. Cancel that. And texture, once again, you can import any texture to apply to model. So I still have that previous texture um, I imported earlier. So I'll just enable it to show you to show you what that does. So using the color on in my foreground, it's now painting it's now painting the texture. with the colour that I have selected. Now to show you the difference between brush and texture, if I enable that,
it's now going to paint the actual texture so the actual texture I've imported is now being painted on my model so whether you've created the texture from scratch or you've, whether you've taken photographs uh, it is important to have your own images and not all free images and not have any issues with copyright um, by importing other people's images but uh, so the difference is that the texture is actually using the look and the exact look and the exact texture onto the surface of your model whereas brush is just using the mask of that texture but painting it with the colour that you've selected. So that's the brush icon and the texture icon explained there. Okay, so that's our painting brushes and our brush and texture icons and the size, strength and hardness sli sliders with the invert option. The airbrush will give a consistent flow as if you are using an airbrush, an actual airbrush, so it will give a consistent amount of paint as you paint your model. Just playing with the lazy mode. Just play with these settings and icons and see for yourself the actual difference between what you can actually achieve. So by inverting and actually Select paint, selecting the paint color, you will fill the entire model with that foreground color. Okay, so with the texture, with the texture um, selected, just explain. So the invert will do the opposite so it will reverse that texture and give a slightly different outcome now the height and ma height mask um, option the mask when you select the height mask option it will mask as you paint automatically and protect the high and low polygons of your model so this tool is useful when when you want to alter say pores of the skin without actually affecting the skin tone so it's good for for detail work like that the directional uh, the, the the direction directional option will obviously change the direction. Um, will we'll go by the direction that you're of the stroke as you brush, and then random will constantly vary without you altering your brush stroke. Will constantly vary the direction of the texture being painted onto that. And then when you invert the enable the texture, um, you have the same options with height mask and direction, and then random as well. 
And then we can move on to this, the advanced tools there by selecting show advanced tools. We have save, you can save your you can now save your texture map as a PNG file. You can open texture maps. So and the, both the saving texture maps and the opening of the texture maps are both PNG files alone. Uh, you can save out normal maps and that's based off your uh, UV mapping so it will generate a map from the model surface normals based off your UV mapping and then we've got uh, save bumps you, now you can't import bump maps into sculptures but you can export the bump maps that you've created so if I just by creating this bump map for example I can then export that but I can't ex import bump maps I can only export bump maps um, and so that the that will be referenced as so the pure white will be uh, it will go off grayscale values and pure white represents the most maximum positive bumps on the surface of the mesh and you, the bump maps will be saved out as 16-bit TIFF images and so now the texture maps, normal maps, bump maps can then be imported into other 3D programs um, and that yeah, so they can be imported individually there and of course you can export into a PSD file and import from a PSD file so you can interchange between sculptures and Photoshop uh, and go back and forth between them very easily the same way you can go back and forth between sculptures and ZBrush very easily and of course the last thing you can enable the masking mode you can hide mask and you can edit mask so if you en en enable you can uh, mask a section well it's all it's all, all masked and then you can hide that mask or you can edit that mask so now I'm editing an area that I don't want to be masked though so then the masked regions won't be affected but the regions that I have edited will be affected so that's the value of having the mask option so if you've created something that you love and you don't want to change just enable mask mode and cover that and then edit the section that you do want to be changed so that's painting in a nutshell in sculptures so once again paint color is shortcut is D Paint Bump shortcut is B, Fill and Clear shortcut is Command F, Flatten Bump is shortcut is F, Wireframe shortcut is W or Shift F, and Symmetry of course, Symmetry doesn't have a shortcut. And I hope that has helped and I hope you've learned something and I hope you have, can now have fun playing with sculptures, with sculpting and painting and I'll see you in the next tutorial.